Good afternoon. Welcome to my sewing room. On a snowy... Well, it's not snowing at the moment. It was snowing, though. On a snowy Tuesday. Because it's spring. Or false winter. Whatever you want to call it. Or... Surger month. Surger month. <laughs> I like it. I'm Leah. And this is Chelsea. Um, we're here today showing off more things about Surger Month that maybe you didn't know. Um, Surger Month with Bernina. Um, so there's all sorts of cool Bernina things available. And we're doing something really cool today on a cool machine. Right? This is a very like neat, neat little thing. Um, so today we're going to show you a stitch that can only happen if you have a combination Surger cover stitch machine. This is a combination stitch that uses a little bit from both sides of that functionality. And if you're set up with a standalone cover stitch and a standalone serger, you'd have to do this in two steps. You could potentially get there, but it would be two steps and a lot more careful driving to have it really Careful even. driving? I'm not in for that. No. I want to... No, no. I want to go quick. We need to surge forward here, Leah. Right? <laughs> so we're going to be doing a combo stitch, which is a two-thread chain stitch and a three-thread overlock. Now, why would we want this? So uh, it's a nice stitch in that you got the security of the chain stitch for mm -hmm. your seam and your edges are finished with the overlock at the edge. Oh. So if you've got something like stretch denim, um, it's super helpful. The pants I'm wearing today, this is actually how they're made on the inside. But I'm wearing them, so you can't see that. <laughs> I would ask you to show me, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting the camera there. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it takes different permissions on YouTube than what we have. I'm very interested, though. Yeah, so these ones are made that way. But they are like a stretch woven, which is really nice and comfy to wear. Hmm. So they've got enough give that the seams stay put when pants go up and down. It's fair. Yeah. You need it's, that. It's lovely. So um, we're going to pop onto the close-up camera. Chelsea is going to walk you through um, threading for this fancy stitch. And we'll show you where the needles are going to go um, on a Bernina L890. Yay! Other machines that you could do this on would be the Burnett 48. And the newly available in Canada, Burnett 68. Which is the Ooh. Air Thread Burnett. Couple Fabulous. different options there. And it's a neat little stitch. So we'll watch through as we go. So on screen right now, um, Chelsea's, we did a practice run through this. So technically our machine setup is all ready to go, but we can walk through the guided mode that will show us all the things we need to do to make it happen. Oops. I think you just picked that first one there. And there is actually four different versions of this stitch on the machine. So the needles move around a little bit for a different width on the stitches. And and you have to put your needles in a really weird spot. Yeah. I so, like it. So we're going to put one needle in the front half of the needle block for the cover stitch uh, portion of the machine, so the chain stitch. And we're going to put one needle in the back portion of the machine for our overlock stitch. Um, with this stitch, we are going to be trimming off the side, so we'll activate our knife. And make sure you do this part. Yeah. If you don't want to know how I know. We learn the hard way. Yes. In the practice run. <laughs> um, we're going to make sure we have the serger cover on the door. I have that. Yep. And we're going to make sure the upper looper is activated. So that means that the upper looper is be being used. Which it's not in the cover stitch stitches. And make sure you do this because we're not running two threads. Correct. From there, we're going to make sure our rolled hem lever or our stitch selection lever is in the O position so it's engaged. And our micro thread control is at zero as the default. This is definitely something you could adjust after you do a test sew up. And then we get to thread all five threads. And this is the only time that it will happen, but we're going to use all three loopers. All in, all in one stitch. <laughs> that was not easy for a moment there. <laughs> all right, should I move this yep. so we can see what I'm doing? Yeah. All right, I think we're focused on our air loops. Yeah. Beautiful. 
So it's just going to turn the knob that makes the air tubes close. And if they don't quite close when we do that, you might need to wiggle the hand wheel or press the foot control to move the machine to the correct position. And the smaller knob in there is to activate the upper looper. And then to air thread this machine, you get to push the gas pedal and it shoots the thread through the looper. Set up. The chain stitch looper is the purple thread in our in our case. Um, it gets cut short and just hangs below the plate. My thread's a little staticky. <laughs> The red thread is our lower looper for the overlock portion of the stitch. And that's going to get tucked uh, back behind under the foot. I'm going to trim some threads for Chelsea because they're getting everywhere. Out of hand? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> I and don't then we're going to thread the blue thread through the upper looper. I really am not sure how my thread got so long. I don't know either. I think it caught on your sweater. Yep, yeah, blame the sweater. Yep. Oh, dear. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was just tangling. I wanted to make sure it all got through. Yeah. Because that was, again, one of the threads I pulled way too long. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now all three loopers are threaded. And I think we'll just do a quick camera reposition. Yeah. That should be good. Oops, a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Okay. And, and C goes over the yellow one, right? Yep, or you could check the video. Oh, I could. Or LN, not LC. Left needle. Left needle. I love the videos. Right? The thing I love about the videos is if you try and do one of these stitches and it's been a little while since you're in your new owner's class, you've got that great video reference of where the thread goes to make this happen. Yeah, it's like having a class in your machine, right? essentially. There is a, uh, one of the accessories is a needle threader, um, but I think Chelsea is like myself where once you get a uh, handle on threading with tweezers, it's pretty quick and easy. The key is to leave the tail really short that you're holding because then it behaves like a little wire instead of like a floppy thread. <laughs> you don't want to be putting a floppy thread in. No. It's not as easy. Not at all. I'm doing a video on that yellow thread, and this is threading for the cover stitch or chain stitch type position. So it's going around those extra um, guides on the left hand side. I like when you can get the thread in there with confidence. Right? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> right in it goes. Okay. I think we have all of our friends. I think so. Make sure our threading tubes are open again. Close all the doors. And on screen, just screen check mark to get to your actual stitch on screen. So both chain stitch and overlock stitching can be done without fabric under the foot. And in this case, I do recommend starting with a bit of a chain. Um, it helps to ensure that both, all five threads are coming through the machine and not getting wrapped around the foot or doing anything super weird. I would also recommend this because definitely on the test round, I got the thread wrapped around the foot a few times. Yeah. 
and thread wrapping around things that you don't intend can lead to broken thread and broken needles, which is no fun at all. Should I reposition our camera a little bit? Maybe, yeah. Okay, how's that? Pretty good. Yep. So with this stitch, we are going to trim off the edge of the fabric as we go to make sure we have a nice clean edge for the overlock to wrap around. And the chain stitch is going to be our seam. So when you're setting up for this, you'll want to pay attention to where your seam line needs to be for the pattern you're using so you get the right seam lines. And you'll be able to use the uh, little raised ridges on the front of the foot to help you narrow that down. Not a sweet little stitch. That's front side. And that's back side. It's lovely. It's beautiful. I like it. So if you're looking at the foot, if Chelsea slides some fabric underneath it for just a moment. The camera stops trying to focus weird. Um, the little ridges at the front of the foot are going to align with each of the needles. So probably third from the left will be our left needle for our chain stitch, which is the seam line in this in this particular stitch. Because that one's our knife. Yes. Aha. And then that's our right needle and left needle, and there's our other three. Yeah. Cool. Not a cool little stitch. It is really cool. And I like that the foot has that many ridges on it to tell right? us where everything is. Me too. And I just want to see this. So if you're concerned about the seam showing through on your pants or whatever you're making, you would want to match both those chain threads to your fabric. And then the rest of the threads could be whatever you want because you're not going to see them. Exactly. Maybe not black underneath a piece of white fabric, but... No, but if you're <laughs> making a blue dress and you want to put pink thread on the inside for a pop of color, you definitely could. You know, I definitely like doing stuff like that. Me too. I made a t-shirt once and I was serging it. And so in my needles, I put white thread. Yeah. And then in the loopers, I put red and blue because it was for a Harley Quinn shirt. Nice. It was kind of fun. Nice. It was a pop of fun. Yep. And it's one of those um, places where you can add a little bit of personality. Oh, and, totally. And customize just for yourself. You could even put variegated thread in there. That could be really fun. It would be really pretty. It would be. But then you might actually want that to show. You could use it as a decorative stitch right. instead. Absolutely. Absolutely you could. Um, so that is our combination stitch, the last of the basic stitches in the serger cover stitch family. That was fun. Right? I like it. Me too. It's interesting. And hmm. then you can move the needles around and get different widths happening. It's neat. That's fantastic. Yeah, because yeah, you could do a narrow one. Uh, I think I did the wide one, right? And then I think they said they yeah. had a narrow. It does not say narrow. But they look like they're getting narrower. Oh, you could do that with two threads. Yep, yeah, so that's where you'd use the upper looper converter. Cool. Yeah, so then you'd, you'd have less bulk on that seam finish. That'd be nice. On the inside. Good for something slim fitting. Like yeah. tight fitting. Yeah, or a really light, airy fabric that you don't want to weigh down. Like double gauze. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. So those are, that's our fun new little stitch. If you haven't seen it before, now you have. That was fun. Um, other things going on here at the store this week. Ooh, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> now you put me on the spot. <laughs> we have Snow Day 50 on. Yep, so if you're in the city and needing some things, our Snow Day 50 coupon is available to use online. And that means that if you spend $50 and over uh, and you live within city limits, um, the magical coupon code is going to get you free shipping to your door. Yes, because maybe some of us put our summer tires on. It's your fault. I did. Well, when I say I did, I mean my boyfriend did. My, my daughter asked this morning who put their snow brush away. 
Did you can snow- tell her, no, snowbrush was in the truck. <laughs> I didn't put the snowbrush away. <laughs> okay. It never goes away. It's away is inside the car. <laughs> okay. But you did put your summer tires on. Yes. Okay, I'm blaming you for this weather that we're having. All right. I'm okay with or that. Or I'll, I'll blame your other half. Yeah, blame him. Okay, we'll blame him. He won't know you are, so it's perfect. Okay. Um, so that's going on. And valid until Friday, April 19th at close. Yep. So that's uh, 6 p.m. on Friday. <laughs> it is 6 p.m. on Friday. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and then we've also got a whole stack of gently used machines, some of which are surgers. The fabulous. That are looking for new homes. So you might want to check that out. They've been fully through our service department. They've mm-hmm. been checked, maintained, cleaned, oiled, and they're ready to go. Yep. And you can still take new owner's classes when you buy a secondhand machine with us. You sure can. So I think that's fabulous. Um, we have um, some Tuffet and Rope Bowl classes coming up on the calendar. We sure do. And some more new owner's classes are scheduled. <gasps> new owner's classes? Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, and then uh, May 11th, we have our PR side hustle event. So mm-hmm. if you want to learn how to make money with embroidery, it's a good class. Out. Come hang out. I'm ready to learn. Yeah. I would like to know more. Right. Me too. We also have our doom and gloom challenge still on. Ooh, and you've had a couple photos roll in already, haven't you? I've had two. Two photos. Two of our friends. So. They're we- fabulous entries. I really enjoyed and seeing them. Really, I, they're really different from each other, aren't they? They're so different. One you can wear. Well, not an adult. An adult couldn't wear it. But it was crazy cute. Yes. And the other one you could use in your kitchen. Oh, nice. I'm not spoiling what they are. No, that's awesome. So the Dream <laughs> and Gloom Challenge, um, we have Fat Quarter Bundles made called the Doom and Gloom. There's a series of them. Yeah. Um, a series of seven. Seven, yeah. So you come pick up a bundle, or more than one if you're making something bigger. Mm-hmm. And you can add more fabric if it's not quite enough, or you need a little more color or something. Um, and you're going to make something before May 6th. And that something is totally up to you. There's no rules for that. Um, you could just, like, wallpaper your house. I won't judge you if you much podged it onto something. <laughs> That'd be sweet. <laughs> Some of those fabrics are really pretty. They'd be gorgeous. They'd Mod be cool Yeah. Yep. Um, so you're going to make something. Send us a photo by May 6th, and then you will be... Uh, we're going to do a vote. Yes. We're going to do a vote on our... Oops. I keep kicking that stool. Yeah. A vote on our Facebook group. Yes. And so to send in the photo, you go to our website... There is a banner in our website that says the Doom and Gloom Challenge. You click the button, and it'll lead you directly to where you can send in a photo. Perfect. If you're having any troubles with that, you can just email it over to myself, education at mysewingroom.ca. Just make sure you title it something, then I'll find it. Yep. Sounds like a Doom and Gloom. Yep. Or hi, Chelsea. I like those ones. They're cute. (laughs) We'll read all the emails that come in. <laughs> we read all of them, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Then there's a chance to win after the voting happens. So, you'll want to get your name in there for that by making something. Yeah. Um, lastly. Oh, no. The thing just completely <laughs> slipped out of my mind. I also oh, me. I think <laughs> we went through a, a we galaxy th- door thing. Did we go through the whole list? Okay, we talked about classes. Oh! Doom and gloom. You have to open your email newsletter tomorrow. Morning. Oh, yeah! Make sure you open that! So, Wednesday morning, there will be an e-news coming your way. If you're not signed up for the e-news, you want to click on our website, mysewingroom.ca, um, and get signed up for the email newsletter. Yep. And then you will get it in your fabulous inbox, and you will open it, and you will enjoy the thing that's in it. Do you know what tomorrow is? What's tomorrow? National blah, blah, blah day. National blah, blah, blah day. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. It is a thing. <laughs> okay, well then. <laughs> Does that mean I can just go blah, 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 blah and not say real words tomorrow? Sure. Oh, okay. Unless we're on camera. Camera with our friends. Oh, it's Wacky Wednesday We'll tomorrow. have to actually talk. Yes. I'm sure Sandy won't be going blah, 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 blah. No, that's not her thing. So. <laughs> She's uh, well planned out. You'll want to come back tomorrow for... 
Wacky Wednesday. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing what you make with your combination serger cover stitch machine. I can't wait.